Why, hello there, guys, and welcome back to Not Only Surviving But Thriving While Living in Positively Perfect Phuket, Thailand, with me, your crazy kooky host. Yes, it is Thailand's happiest all about Dr. Mark Sabian, telling you all of the things that just nobody is covering or being honest about. If you're thinking about moving to Thailand, retiring to Thailand, or even just coming here for, you know, a long-term visit. Guys, in this video, I'm going to touch on five things that I think that you need to know that are incredibly important before you even land here that you honestly need to know about, think about, and be prepared for, okay? So let's just jump in with one of the things I find really funny, but uh, scares the out of a lot of people. They drive on the wrong side of the road. No, technically they drive on the right side of the road. Well, really, if you think about it, it's on the left side of the road, but it is the right side of the road. Anyway, it's it's just wrong and I, I, I can't do it. If I had a bot for every time I've heard that they drive on the wrong side of the road, I'd have a fleet of Vespas, let me tell you something. Guys, listen, it is confusing to some people, I get that. Is it the right side, is it the left side, is it the wrong side? I really don't know, all I know is this much. If you come to Thailand, guys, and you want to drive a motorbike, trust me, your sense of self-preservation will kick in in a hurry and it will just be Literally 30, 45 seconds of getting on the bike, you will fully understand what side of the road you're supposed to be on. I have not met anybody who has made a fatal error. I've met a few people who, uh, after having too many Leos, hop on a bike and yeah, they got no clue what they're doing, but uh, that's not because of what side of the road they're supposed to be on. It's because they're drunk idiots who should not be driving. That being said, guys, listen, I promise you, driving here is a whole lot easier than you make it out to be. It's not scary, it's quite simple. During high season when the traffic is insane down on Phuket, especially in Patong, yeah, it can get pretty nuts, but you know what? If you take your time, you uh, pay attention, and again, you don't drink and drive, you'll be perfectly fine. Now again, I will say this, as I say in all of my driving videos, or anytime I'm discussing driving, you have to wear a helmet here, and guys, you have to have a shirt on. Ladies, if you don't want to have one on and you're on the back of a bike, I'm not going to complain, but you will get a ticket. And you have to have an international driver's permit, okay? Not that bullshit thing that you can buy online that's called the international driver's license. There is no such thing at all. Do not get scammed by that. Get an IDP international driving permit you have to have it unless you have a Thai driver's license or you have a driver's license that is recognized by the Kingdom of Thailand so if you live in Malaysia Cambodia or a surrounding country like that you can drive here if you have a driver's license which has a motorcycle endorsement remember you have to have the motorcycle endorsement to drive here or you will get a ticket and a ticket is going to be anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 baht, which is 30 to 60 US dollars. Pretty simple, pretty easy. But hey, listen, if you're here on a 14 day vacation and you get one ticket, you can keep that ticket for the entire time you're here, pay it when you leave. When you get stopped, just show the cops and they will leave you alone, okay? Um, but yeah, helmet and you have to have a proper international driving permit with the motorcycle endorsement. And again, trust me guys, it's not hard driving on the left side, the right side, whatever side it is, you'll be perfectly fine because again, you don't want to die and you're not going to kill yourself. Self-preservation usually kicks in. Unless you're totally stupid, yeah, you should be fine. Thailand can be extremely dangerous. A lot of people do not talk about this, but the good doctor is going to share his thoughts and insights on this, okay? listen. I have been here and I have never had any trouble at all, but again, I don't go looking for trouble. I do tell people from time to time that I am shocked at the, the incredibly low amounts of crime here. Again, I take my motorbike, park it at the airport, I leave my incredibly expensive helmet on my motorbike for a week or two weeks at a time, nobody steals it. I can leave my bike parked anywhere in Patong, Phuket, Thailand, anywhere in this entire country with my helmet on it and no one's going to steal my helmet. I've even gone so far as to leave my keys in the bike. No one has ever stolen my bike. I'm sure it could happen. I've never seen it happen. Don't know anybody that it has ever happened to. 
I have never been robbed here. I have never been threatened here. I've never, well, with the exception of that one idiot from the United States who decided to come down to my favorite bar and try to kill me, uh, the local people are fantastic. Um, I know girls who are going out on dates here and they don't have that whole fear factor that they have back in North America going on dates. I know people who roam around the streets all night long and they have no worries, no fears at all. The only time you're going to find trouble here is if you go looking for it yourself. As some British blokes found out a couple of weeks ago up in Patia and got the kicked out of them. Listen, there's all kinds of videos online. People have talked about it. They've done these YouTube videos, etc., etc., talking about how you should never get into a fight with a local Thai person because it's not going to be one-on-one. -on -one. The locals are going to come and defend the Thai guy and you're going to get into a situation where it's going to be five, six, even ten against one or two and you will get up my friend. So can Thailand be dangerous? It certainly can if you're one of those idiots that has to go looking for trouble and let's be honest there's a lot of morons out there who get a couple of drinks into themselves all of a sudden they want to start throwing hands and uh, it's going to end extremely bad for you. Not only that and I've touched on this many many times in my videos if you're one of these homophobic idiots who just can't stand to see someone else be happy in their own skin and you come here and a lady boy you know flirts with you or tries to be playful with you and you think that you're going to go off on them think again my friend because the last thing you want is your ass whooped by a bunch of girls or boys in dresses and that posted on YouTube because it happens all the time boys so uh, yeah if you're coming here, it's unbelievably safe. Can it be dangerous? It certainly can. If you're one of these idiots that has to go looking for trouble, or you're just a miserable person all the way around, you're going to uh, you're going to find it extremely dangerous here and get yourself into situations that you uh, you're going to lose in every single time. Probably the number one question I get after "Are you a lady boy?" is, "Well, do they speak English?" And the answer to that is yes and no. Listen, you are coming to a foreign country that speaks a foreign language to yours, okay? The official language of Thailand is Thai. It is not English. So no, not every single person here is going to be able to speak English. Do you speak Thai? Because you're coming to their, their country, you should at least put an effort into learning some of the phrases that are going to help you get by here on a day-to-day -day basis because they shouldn't have to cater to you or learn every single language in the world for people who are coming here to Thailand. Remember guys, there are more Chinese people come to Thailand than English speaking people. That, that's a fact, okay? Um, so are they supposed to be fluent in every language in the world? No. Good luck learning some Thai, guys. I am going to do a, a series about basic phrases that you need to learn. Hopefully that's coming in, in June. I'm just trying to find the right person to help me for that. Anyways, listen, I tried to learn some basic stuff. And again, I will try to share with you some of the stuff that I've learned. But what I do, I either use my phone or I use a translator like this one here. No, this is not an info commercial for this, guys. I will be doing one eventually, but this is the T1 Fluent Talk from Time Kettle. It is a fantastic device, and I'm going to tell you something. It is worth its weight in gold because you can translate anything with this. You can take pictures with it. You can. I go to a lot of spots where the menus don't have pictures. They have no English, anything, nothing but gibberish. And this, take a picture, boom, it translates it for me and I know exactly what it is. When I'm out on these motorcycle tours that I love to go on, I'm usually in spots where the last white guy they saw was on TV. Do you know what I'm saying? So they, nobody is speaking English, French, Chinese, anything but the local dialect. And my translator, it comes in, oh, it's so handy. Now, I will say this much. One of the things that causes a lot of problems between guys and girls here, these guys that come over and they want to have, you know, a, a, a real honest relationship with a girl, not just a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, short time. Communication, guys.
If she can't speak English, guys, you are going to have one of a hard time. I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be frustrating beyond belief. I know there's a lot of people thinking that, oh, it'd be fantastic if she can't say nothing at all. No, that's not, that's not the case, Ace. Let me tell you something. For several reasons, okay? Yes, I know you've probably been nagged and nagged and nagged your whole life, and you're thinking, I don't know if I can... Wait till the first time you need help with something and you can't convey to her what you need her to help you with and it's frustrating as. Or let's say you wanna have an actual real conversation with her and she doesn't understand anything that you're saying because she just has a basic grasp of English and you have zero grasp of Thai, she's not gonna understand anything you're saying. So if you at least have a translator, it can really help you, okay? And it will do it in real time. The thing I hate about my phone is you gotta sit there and type it out, type it out, type it out, and then wait and wait and wait. My translator is instant and it's, it's fantastic and the accuracy is off the charts. Guys, I'm gonna tell you something. Communication is one of those things that nobody really talks about, but it is, it's a challenge when you get here and uh, it, can be, uh, it can be a nightmare, no question at all. Now, I fully expect to get called everything but Dr. Mark after I say this, but guys, Thailand can be horrifically expensive. I know that I've gone on about being Thailand's happiest hobo, and I've shown you guys how to live here on $1,000 or less a month, but at the end of the day, Thailand can be incredibly expensive. Hear me out before you start throwing stones, okay, or calling me a liar or anything like that. My lifestyle is not expensive, okay? I have embraced living a very Spartan, minimalistic life. I don't have a lot of possessions anymore. Back at home, my house was full of shit that honestly, in my four years since I left Canada, I have not missed it in the least bit. Um, the only thing again, as I have mentioned many, many times in my videos before, I miss my, I miss my cars, I really do. But I do not miss that huge house. I don't miss, I don't miss living large, okay? So Thailand can be horrifically expensive. If you're one of these people who wants to maintain that so-called standard of living that you had back in North America or any other part of the world, you are going to find Thailand can be incredibly expensive. Most of the condos, apartments and stuff are smaller. Any place you go in Southeast Asia, apartments, condos are small. If you have to have a great big, huge, sprawling condo, you're going to pay for it. And it's going to cost you substantially more than what you are expecting, especially if you're watching videos like mine. Cars here. Brand new cars are expensive. Now listen, in a recent video, I made an error and I talked about the Honda Civic being crazy. Cars that are imported into Thailand and not manufactured in Thailand have a 300% duty on them, okay? Go watch videos, there's, there's thousands of videos about this. To buy a used Nissan 350Z, one of my favorite cars in the world, cost you quite honestly about forty five to sixty thousand dollars that's almost four times what it would cost you to buy that back in north america i know the last 350z that i sold i sold it for about five thousand us dollars that same car here would cost me a minimum of thirty thousand us no question at all um so Keep that in mind. If you're one of these people that has to have a car or a truck, especially, it's going to be expensive if you're buying a brand new one or you're not buying one that's manufactured here in Thailand. If you want to buy a used one, you can get some killer deals on certain vehicles. Other vehicles, you're going to be shocked at how expensive they are. Imported foods. If you are, again, one of these people who has to live on a Western diet or you have to have certain items, you're going to pay through the nose for them here literally you're going to pay through the nose i have seen just a simple thing of cracked pepper for nine us dollars the same thing that you can walk into any dollar rama dollar store and buy for less than two dollars nine bucks here salsa and nacho chips oh, two to three times what it costs you to buy in your home country okay 
deodorants. Deodorants are next to impossible to find. If you're someone like me who loves stick deodorant and can't stand roll on, you're not going to find it here. And if you do find it, it's going to be four or five times what it costs you back home. Razor blades, razors. Again, most local guys, they don't shave like we do. So yeah, Thailand can be horrifically expensive. And it doesn't matter where you go, where you live, down in Phuket, Bangkok, Chiang, it can be if you are trying to live the same life that you're living in North America, it can be crazy expensive here. Bars, especially places in Bangkok, these really cool hip clubs and stuff, the drinks are every bit as expensive there as they are in Manhattan, okay? I don't go to them. I've been to one or two, but I'm not a club going kind of guy. Um, I have seen bar tabs that have reached in the tens of thousands of US dollars. Guys going and just balling out, having fun, blah, 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 blah. Um, I've seen food bills that would shock the out of people. And I know people again who are down on Phuket struggling because they don't have the ability or the confidence to, to drive a motorbike or, or drive a car for that matter. And they're spending crazy amounts of money on, on taxis and stuff. So Thailand can be horrifically expensive for you guys if you, if you're hoping again to maintain that Western lifestyle. Also, if you are in certain areas, you will find that certain services that are geared towards foreigners are going to be crazy expensive. But if you go to a less touristy spot, you'll find that same service usually half price, if not a third of the cost, okay? So keep in mind, a lot of guys like me are doing these budget videos showing you how cheap it is to live here, but at the same time, it can be crazy expensive if you let it be. Well, I gotta tell you, I love the way this video is flowing together. And believe it or not, I did not plan it out that way. And actually, anybody who has watched me long enough knows I sure as don't plan anything at all, especially the videos. But food, I'm not gonna talk right now about the expense of the food, but how spicy it can be, which ties into the whole communication thing, guys. You need to learn how to order food here. And one of the most important things that you can learn is this phrase, my ao ped, which means not spicy or nit noi, a little bit, okay? Guys, I'm gonna tell you something. The food here will take your face off, especially papaya salad, which is one of the most incredible dishes in the world. I love it. I have it three to five, sometimes 10 times a week, to be honest with you. I love it that much. But if you order it like just normal Thai style, you will die. You will just burst into flame. That's how hot it can be. Okay. Now, that goes with the pad or pow, it goes with a lot of things here. So you need to learn again how to communicate and order. I will say this much, there's gonna be a lot of people in the comment section that are gonna go on about how unhealthy the food here in Thailand is. And as a concession to them, I will say this much, yes, they cook with a lot of sugars, they cook with a lot of sodiums, um, soy sauces, MSG, a lot of stuff is fried, okay? Is it worse than a Western diet? I certainly don't believe so. I know this much. My health has improved tenfold since moving here. My diet, I think, is 10 times better than it was back in Canada. However, keep this in mind, and again, it goes to communication. You can talk to the chef and ask them not to put so much sugar in. Don't use MSG. All of the places that I eat, they cut back on the sugar so that it's just a little tiny sprinkle. Salt, a dash or a pinch, and absolutely no MSG goes into my food. So can you eat healthy here? You certainly can. But remember, it's going to be spicy if you're eating local foods, okay? If you're eating the dishes that Thailand is famous for, such as papaya salad, pad pao, it's smoking hot. So if you want it, if you want to have that Thai experience, but not kill yourself at the same time, Learn how to ask them, my old pet, not spicy. Even not spicy, guys, is spicier than anything that you've had back in North America, but it will at least allow you to eat it and not spend the entire day on your bed crying in absolute agony. Now, 
the expensive part. Can food be expensive here? It certainly can. Listen, if you are eating a Western diet, if you have to have burgers and pizza and steaks and all of this stuff, it can be horrifically expensive. Every bit as expensive as it is back in your home country because don't forget, most of that stuff is imported or it is only marketed to foreigners. You're not gonna see a bunch of uh, locals eating at a Argentinian steakhouse. I'm not gonna name the brand, but uh, you guys know which one I'm talking about. You're never gonna see a local person there unless it's a girl there with a uh, much older, richer farang. Point blank, that's the way it is. Mexican food here, some spots like over in Aonang, um, Mananas has some of the best Mexican food outside of Mexico. However, it's, it's expensive. It's much more expensive than eating local foods, okay? You can find it delicious, but you're gonna pay for it. So yes, you know, you see guys like me doing these videos talking about how cheap it is to eat here, but I'm having a very well-balanced diet. I eat some, I hate to say Western food, because I, I don't really eat Western food. I eat some Mexican, I eat some Italian, and I eat tons and tons of local stuff. And uh, I think my diet is, I guarantee you, Unless you're a world-class athlete, there's no possible way your diet is healthier than mine. I promise you that. And it's definitely not as cheap as mine. But keeping that in mind, the food here can be horrifically expensive and spicy as fuck. So learn how to communicate and uh, you'll be fine. So there we go, guys. Listen, at the end of the day, I think that Thailand is positively perfect. And Phuket, again, is my little slice of paradise. I been able to not only survive but thrive living here because again I have adapted to this lifestyle I've embraced the way that the locals live that mindset of you know not having so much not being a slave to consumerism and materialism and needing to have the newest this the newest that you know yes I have the I have the Samsung s23 ultra phone because I need it for my videos but I'm not going and upgrading my phones all of the time. The only reason I did this is because I completely shattered my, my Huawei that I had for quite a long time. Um, my laptop, again, I've had it serviced, I've had it repaired. I'm probably going to get another three to four years out of it. Um, I'm not out buying new cars or new bikes. As you guys know, I'm doing videos about buying, you know, secondhand bikes because, again, why take that depreciation hit yourself? Um, I'm also, you know, being careful where I go. I'm not doing stupid things. I'm not going out with guys that I know are going to get me into trouble. You know, Thailand can be, again, positively perfect. It can be a little slice of paradise for everyone if you're prepared when you come here. And I think one of the best things you can do to prepare yourself is, again, learn some very basic Thai phrases. I am going to be doing a video very soon about the things that I think are really important for you to learn how to say. And uh, hopefully you guys will catch that video. Until then, guys, keep eating the food. Have a great time. Enjoy yourself. And uh, when you get to Thailand, look me up. Beers are on me. Till next time, guys, just live your best life. It's all I want for you. Because, again, you only have one. And anything less than the best, you know it. Till next time, guys, cheers.